Hello friends, welcome back. We are trying to pursue a relationship between strategy and innovation and trying to understand the long term elements associated with each other as well as the organizational alignment associated with propelling innovation, especially marketing of innovation through and through while garnering the strategic support of whole of the organization. And we came up with wonderful examples like Pampers, the story of how Pampers became a five decade success story while dipping a bit then coming back and a story of innovation and marketing of innovation all through. How you know starting from an incidental observation it went along becoming the companion of a child through the stages of growth. And then there are several issues and I, I was talking about Scorpio as well and Nexa and then several kinds of examples which you would have seen through their stories and websites and uh, you know uh, research papers written on them and case studies written on them up till now hopefully. And if you have not please do that. Now we are progressing towards the next stage and I would be taking up a connecting slide from the last discussion first and then to build up a case and then would be projecting a case study in front of you which will be telling you or uh, you know exemplifying our discussion on connecting innovation to strategy, how innovation is connected to strategy and how it can be propelled through and through. So, this is what we are talking about that without an innovation strategy companies will have a hard time, they will have trouble designing a coherent innovation system and innovation as it spans across various organizational functions can only be shared by senior leaders largely as the author says and how you know things have to be uh, put up to the levels of adaptability. Let us look at this case study, Dr. Reddy's laboratories, innovation, marketing and strategy. And it is a wonderful uh, you know uh, expression and, and uh, this uh, you know the source is given uh, at the uh, foot of the slide, Kumara ji 2022 August 17, India as a pharma innovation hub An interview with Dr. Reddy's G. V. Prasad, McKinsey and company and uh, the details are given. So, a good example of how tight connection between business strategy and innovation can drive long term innovation leadership is found in Dr. Reddy's laboratories, a very interesting case. And the similarity of this case you may observe in several kinds of organizations, especially the organizations which had a core perspective around I should say B 2 B products many a times. And definitely B 2 C products it, it can be observed, but, but organizations which had a function which bring on something to be used by so many organizations for producing further goods and those become you know important daily life things. For example, if you look at look into the business of glues, adhesives, who all are manufacturing adhesives and adhesives are being used by almost everyone in this world for making different kinds of products for example furniture the the furniture i am using the the chair i am sitting at and and you know this this podium and uh, you know the screens i am having in front of me adhesives are used almost everywhere but who are those large manufacturers who are producing adhesives in this world there are many try to find out and then you would find out that many organizations on their websites they claim one of the largest organizations you know or few of them they claim that there are seldom any products which do not use their adhesives for that matter. It is a big business and similar other businesses and elements are there. Let us see what we find as far as Dr. Reddy's case go. So, Dr. Reddy's laboratories is a prominent Indian pharmaceutical company with a remarkable success story rooted in robust innovation strategy as you all know and we have such different kinds of pharmaceutical stories in India and thankfully Indian pharmaceutical uh, uh, you know, sector is growing very fast. So, as Mr. G. V. Prasad, Dr. Uh, Dr. Reddy's laboratories uh, from Dr. Reddy's laboratories say that our business is innovation. Dr. Reddy's invests a lot in basic research, a practice that many companies gave up long ago or you see that is what we have been trying to build up that many a times we feel that okay, we are confident about this innovation it would go on and on. Pampers case also three decades they went on and then suddenly they realize no that something else has to be done and that is the point. So, 
many companies you know they, they just relax I would not say give up. So, it has invested significantly Dr. Reddy's laboratories they have sig uh, invested significantly in research and development emphasizing the development of generic drugs and novel pharmaceuticals. They allocate a substantial portion of their revenue to research fostering a culture of innovation. Alignment of strategy with innovation requires fund allocation and bringing the will of leadership on board to make it happen. If they do not believe you they would not you know they would not support to that to that end. Dr. Reddy's has become known for its cost efficient production methods. This approach allows them to provide high quality pharmaceuticals at competitive prices making them a preferred choice for customers and partners. They have formed partnerships with global pharmaceutical companies for drug development and distribution. These collaborations have helped them access advanced technologies and extend their product portfolio. They have worked on innovative drug delivery systems such as controlled release formulations and biosimilars which provide patients with improved treatment options. And we have a very eminent group of faculty members here at the department. So, I have been talking to several of my colleagues who have been working on several kinds of innovations and uh, innovative uh, you know things basically and, and uh, different kinds of experiments are being going on and so on. And they are you know uh, very equipped to detail upon these kind of things which we are referring to here you know controlled release formulations and biosimilars and so on. And the advantages of these kind of processes. I have realized that these things they take long long time, but when they come up largely that is very advantageous in terms of drug delivery and, and so on and then several kinds of things you know are catered to as far as fighting the diseases go. Similar to formulating an effective strategy the process of crafting an innovation strategy should commence with a clear understanding and articulation of specific objectives related to helping the company achieve a sustainable competitive advantage. Here the most important thing which we are talking about is a clear understanding and articulation of specific objectives. It is very important element when we are talking of as far as you know connecting innovation to strategy goes. A robust innovation strategy should answer the following questions and mark these questions which are very important. How will innovation create value for potential customers? Here we are talking of potential customers and once we are talking of potential customers we are talking in terms of targets or micro segments and you would realize when we are talking of targets and micro segments foreseeing them as potential is a very important element and that has a two way aspect. On the one side how far we look at the span of the innovation which is coming up from this side and how far that span or, or uh, how far that span can be converted into utility from the perspective of the customers that is an important thing. And, and whenever I look into you know several kinds of products which are necessary thanks to Padman kind of things which happened in India. Otherwise, India was fighting through hygiene product crisis basically uh, you know and, and today we have those kind of movies which are exemplifying and highlighting the benefits of these kind of things. Several kinds of things which would have been long adopted in our world in, in, in our country. They took some time, but I am very happy that we are growing very fast in terms of as far as the situation goes. There are several kinds of things which are you know uh, which are important for us to look into as far as uh, the environmental conservation while living a happy and healthy life goes and those are related to innovations by the organizations within the organizations. Sometimes I feel that what air conditioning industry should be thinking in terms of uh, you know as far as changing their course while being innovative while realigning their business strategy with whole of the scenario. Would it be a radical fundamental thought? Yes, it would be and I would be talking about that. So, here micro segments as far as the scenario goes. So, how will innovation create value for potential customers? How will the company capture a share of the value its innovation generates? What type of innovations will allow, allow the company to create and capture value and what resources should each type receive? Resource allocation is the most important thing and that is where we are talking of as far as the strategy goes because resource allocation comes from HR department, finance department, operations department and so on. And for this complete leadership 
as far as the complete scenario you know come in support for as far as the situation goes. So, HR, finance and then operations and this leadership perspective. So, how will innovation create value for potential customers? We have talked about how to analyze potential uh, you know customers, we have talked about uh, while we were talking about innovations in marketing we talked about you know uh, those kind of things and, and please refer to those sessions to look into you know uh, as far as future micro segments and targets go. So, unless innovation induces potential customers to pay more, saves them money or provides some larger societal benefit like improved health or cleaner water, it is not creating value. In nutshell, are we living up to the definition of marketing as such, creating, communicating and you know, you know that. So, definition of marketing as such and we have talked about that creating, communicating and delivering offerings which have value for the clients, customers, partners and society at large. So, that is what you know definition of marketing. Innovation can generate value through various avenues. It could enhance product performance, simplify usability, boost reliability and increase durability, reduce costs and so forth. Last time we uh, talked about sticky uh, pads that the, those you know note clips those kind of things, those kind of simple products. We have talked about Scotch Bride long before, we have talked about several kinds of products and so on. Deciding on the type of value or innovation aims to establish and consistently adhering to that choice is imperative because the capabilities required for each are quite different and take time to accumulate. And this is a very important word which has been written in this uh, paper by Pisano GP is you know to accumulate taking time to accumulate that means bringing on the fruits from all the sides. How will innovation create value for potential customers extending the argument further is that over the span of half a century Bell Labs generated a wide array of breakthrough innovations including the telephone exchange switcher, photovoltaic cells, transistors, satellite communications, lasers, mobile telephony, Unix operating system and many other many many others. But research at Bell Labs was guided by the strategy of improving and developing the capabilities and reliability of the phone network. And remember I talked about the history of organizations and the products. If we are going through that then you would realize that how we moved from you know moved all through telephone exchange switches, photovoltaic cells, transistors and so on. How will the company capture a share of the value its innovations generate? Value creating innovations attract imitators as quickly as they attract customers. Rarely is intellectual property alone sufficient to block these rivals and that is for sure. Reflect upon the proliferation of tablet computers that surfaced following the success of Apple's iPad. With imitators entering the market, they introduce competitive price dynamics that may diminish the value initially secured by the original innovator and so on. And you see it happens basically. After a particular stage when the you do not require a distinct kind of a usage associated with that kind of a product or you are not craving for that product quality, you means customer. So, then you might go for you know any option for that matter. And many a times you know specialists they understand the value of a particular kind of a uh, product. I, I, I have been talking about these kind of things now and then and I, I remember I mentioned you know sports gear for example, sports equipment, rackets, bats. If you are a specialist you, you play not not even professionally you pay, play passionately then you would be caring about those kind of you know rackets or bats or those kind of you know cricket bats and hockey sticks. But if you are just a player you would go and you purchase a football and you purchase a hockey and you come back and then uh, it is it's just a hockey. So, that is the perspective. So, then, then uh, you know if, if you are really a jogger then you would go for those kind of shoes otherwise you would just buy a shoe and you jog. So, that is the perspective of as far as differentiation goes but many a times this becomes a very major question for organizations who are trying to give you that kind of a product with differentiation and charging that money but imitators they come in. So, companies must think through what complementary assets, capabilities, products or services could prevent customers from de uh, defecting the rivals and keep their own position in the ecosystem strong. Apple for instance strategically establishes synergies between its devices and services. Many others they have started following this kind of a model which Apple does. 
enticing iPhone owners to opt for an iPad over a computer's tablet. By retaining control over the operating system, Apple positions itself an indispensable participant in the digital ecosystem. Apple is one of the most talked about case studies in the whole of this world. And I definitely suggest my students that try to systematically understand what these kind of organizations do, they do because these are not just simple case studies. They have become big brands, but we have to understand the intelligence they have poured in as far as you know propelling strategy and innovation all to uh, all through and all uh, all together. What type of innovations will allow the company to create and capture value? And what resources should each type receive? And that is an important question when we are talking of strategy. So, technological innovation is a huge creator of economic value and a driver of competitive advantage, but some important innovations may have little to do with new technology and we have talked about that earlier as well. Over the past few decades, world is witnessing numerous companies such as Netflix, Amazon, LinkedIn, Uber, Excel in the realm of business model innovations. Thus, in, the think in thinking about innovation opportunities, Companies have a choice about how much of the efforts to focus on technological innovation and how much to invest in business model innovation. Business impro improving upon the complete business model structure, revisiting the question that what business we are into. A helpful way to think where the focus is through the innovation landscape map. Look at this. So, should we be thinking in the terms of disruptive innovation, architectural innovation, radical or routine? You see, uh, if you will look at these quad uh, quadrants, uh, and, and uh, you know this article talks about that. So, uh, there, that on on one axis, you would find resources new business. Sorry, requires new business model, and then leverages existing business model. So. Whatever business model you are focusing upon, whatever business definition you have quoted for yourself, what business we are into? We are into the business of teaching engineering education or techno managerial education or man, uh, you know managerial and technical education. If that is the business we are thinking of, then we are going for existing business model. If we are going for that, we are a research and knowledge sharing organization preparing the future of this world, leave aside country then requires new business model approach. And then, then the horizontal axis talks about leverages existing technical competencies and requires new technical competencies and then the quadrants they behave the same way. So, I will be quickly taking you through this basically as far as the uh, structure goes. So, you see when we are talking of disruptive element and when we say that you know uh, as far as it, it leverages existing technical competencies and along with as far as you know requiring new uh, business model perspective goes. So, everything has to be in alignment and you see uh, if you will look at these quadrants, if you will look into the architectural perspective, you may realize that while being uh, we being disruptive, we move towards an architectural element as far as the whole scenario goes. We may look at the radical perspective while looking at you know as far as this existing business model goes. Uh, we look into you know enhancing the technical competencies go. Many a times what happens is that we have to start from not revisiting the business model, but focusing upon the technical uh, competencies because if we do not do that, we would be left behind. But then we have to look into the business model approach as well later on to become you know as far as architectural goes. So, the objective here is to take everything towards architectural uh, you know change at large while innovating upon as far as the whole scenario goes through technical competencies and while uh, also simultaneously revisiting the business model goes. I will give you a small testimony without taking names uh, much of the organizations because I do not personally prefer talking about failures of organizations at large by naming them. So, you see a large online retailer sells itself to a very large retail organization. They were technically they were developing technical competencies and they were focusing upon that subscription was increasing at at large you know they were they were bringing on customers on board but somehow they were not visiting as far as the business model goes so if they would have the business model you know they a newer business model or newer perspective around business model they might have gone for an architectural kind of a change which would have led them into a different kind of a trajectory as far as their organization goes. Not, uh, they did not lose at the end of the day, they got a premium price for as far as selling their organization to a very large retailer goes. That is fine, win-win situation for everyone and uh, India could have a multinational 
company coming on board. But again the point is if this organization would have visited itself with a uh, you know fundamental business model approach while uh, or uh, revisiting their business model approach while going for a technological advancement also, it would have reshaped or extended the contribution in shaping up the con complete industry and that is my point. You see the point is that if organizations are sensibly propelling innovation with a strategic orientation and aligning, aligning strategy with uh, innovation, then they are actually contributing towards the industrial, the industrial segment development where they belong to on one side and largely in the economy as such as well. Ultimately, our objective is to grow the market. Remember, this subject has a fundamental reason that we wish to establish means and methods for developing the market as such and that is what we are trying to pursue as far as the situation goes. Now my team has you know very intelligently put up one or two questions for you to write us you know write back to us. So the uh, author Gary P. Pisano of this article you know you need an innovation strategy referred to in this lecture stated that routine innovation is often called myopic or suicidal that thinking is simplistic. What are your thoughts on this statement? Revisit you know the innovation landscape and whatever we have discussed, read some other articles also. I have been referring to several kinds of sources which we have been choosing to bring things for you on board and write back to us on what are your thoughts about routine innovation is often called myopic or societal that thinking is simplistic. So, now let me take you towards another element before I close up this session is related to when we are thinking in terms of strategic orientation of innovation and combining strategy with innovation, we must talk about the enablers of innovation. And you see effective marketing of innovation has to be thought of in terms of enablers as such. What enables the complete process? Because ultimately this is a strategic approach which I am sharing with you. You see whenever we say that okay, I want to have a good life. So when, when I say I want to have a good life, what are the enablers of good life? Anything which actually makes me realize good life is the enabler for good life for me. So that is what we have to and that does not have to be a standard sacrosanct kind of a thing, big city, big house, big car can be a formatted description of good life. But that will not suit everyone. It is a simplistic version of enablement in terms of innovation basically. For example, if you if you think in terms of you know someone uh, you know uh, desires peace more as compared to something else. So, they would prefer smaller cities and that is how things are. So, that is where enablement comes in, in terms of innovation goes and that is why uh, the larger picture which comes in front of us is is uh, though this is a larger picture, but cannot be universal for everyone. There can be elements here which can be you know customized in case of different kinds of organizations. So, I am presenting here in front of you uh, the elements which are largely associated with enabling the innovations and marketing of innovations. But in, in prioritization organizations would require a different kind of a sequence in almost every case. Now, for example, leadership. Leadership is a big enabler, but leadership which has the ownership of that process since the beginning would definitely make a larger difference. And many times we have seen a very innovative organization when there is a change of leadership and that leadership who comes on board is not deeply soulfully associated with the processes which this organization has been following. Many a times do not realize or curtails few things which they do not find prominently important. So, that is the perspective of as far as leadership and the association of leadership with the process of marketing of innovation and their desire and their belief to propel that kind of a situation at the end of the day. And you see many a times it is done because of their desire and willingness. Today there is a huge you know I would not call it race, but then competitive perspective around rankings. Academic leadership in almost all the institutions in this country, they have a major question in terms of lifting up the ranking of their institutions. There are set kinds of teams associated with lifting up the ranking of the institutions 
several kinds of elements are associated with those kind of things which they are worried about. But then if they are soulfully connected to that kind of a thing, then many cases it comes up and if they are not somehow, then it goes to a moderate level, it keeps on going and many a times the argument is that how does it matters if it is you know A, B or C or D, it is very near to uh, each other, it is a relative kind of a thing. But then if you are somewhere at the top you know 1, 2 or top 5, for example, IIT Roorkee is amongst top 5 institutions in this country as far as technical education goes, engineering education goes. So, when you have that you say that which are the top 5 institutions and if IIT Roorkee is there then definitely it has, it has a larger perceptional value also. How strongly all of us we believe in that, we propel that, that is the most important kind of a thing. When they say the safest car, does it rings the bell? Yes, it does. But making it the safest car has been an effort of the complete organization, the innovators definitely, the research and development people definitely, but then leaders who would have propelled that, that safety element and would have emphasized that through and through all, all the organization and brought on that kind of a funding and support to that kind of an effort is a very important kind of a thing. Customer insights is a very big enablement and that we have talked about in case of Pampers for example, how to understand a child or the need of the child how to get those insights, what are the methods which we are using for getting those insights and I talked about that in marketing research and innovation when we talked about that. Infrastructure, what kind of an enablement we are going for as far as the whole infrastructural support goes. For example, you want to experiment, you must have that lab, you must have that equipment even if it has to be used only once and those kind of aspects. Technology and AI, software support, database support is you know is a prized element. Are you willing to spend that kind of money on that? In today's scenario also there are many institutions in this country, academic institutions I am talking of which do not have a repository of journals or uh, you know uh, researches basically, they do not subscribe to those directories and many a times you know and, and I am talking of larger institutions as well. So, if you do not have subscription to those kind of directories, how the faculty would be accessing you know those journals and how would they be reading papers and how would they be propelling research? So, that is if you do not believe in this, how would it happen basically and are you generating that in house, are you working for that, that is again a, ver a very important thing. Strategy definitely it is a it is at core and we have talked about that in the preceding uh, you know argument. Innovation culture, the most important thing, if somehow you have people talking about being innovative, if somehow you have people talking about progressive changes collating things, bringing things on board together basically, then things would come up at large. If some one person is looking at it, bringing uh, you know, those kind of changes or proposing those kind of changes and people resisting to that, it would never happen. And even if they are not resisting, they are not coming along, it would not happen basically. Education training, research and development and diversity, bringing all these things together. And as I said, many times the sequence would start from leadership many times the sequence would start from innovation culture, many times the sequence might start from research and development itself. For example, a core uh, an organization working on as far as R and D based kind of changes bring in that thing through training and education and develop the whole scenario as far as the product development goes and bringing changes on board. Try to find out which if you are associated with some organizations try to find out which sequence suits better for you. If someone very near to you or dear to you is associated with some organizations and you know about that organization, try to find out which sequence would be apt for them. Try to list the factors associated with that sequence, try to find out what role can you foresee for yourself in that complete sequence and try to find out in the end that what is the connection between that sequence strategy and innovation and marketing of innovation at large in the example you have studied. I will be coming back to you with insights on consumer behavior in relation to marketing of innovation and we would be talking about very interesting elements in association with that. I will be catching up back till then goodbye.